As we grow up, we become a little bit more independent. We want to make our way in the world. We start to make our own decisions. And so we start to see some of those behaviours that are really rusted on in the primary years start to weaken a little bit through the high school years. So we do have some more work to do there. Social media is where a lot of young people get their information these days. They're exposed to it a lot more than turning on the TV, for example. That is the channel through which to reach younger people. And we know that sun damage is more serious if you get it before the age of 18. I think there is just so much opportunity there to really push sun smart messaging and just change people's perspectives. So kids are more at risk to UV damage for a variety of reasons, and that's really the first 18 years of life. The whole concept of social desirability of tanning, for example, really comes to the fore in that age group. They have an optimism bias, and so that optimism bias thinks it's not going to happen to me. It can seem very abstract that going out and getting a tan is going to cause us any trouble. And what happens when we're older, that's, you know, down the track. Some research done by the Cancer Council showed that 80% of teenagers still think having a tan is a good thing and one in four will be sunburnt on any given weekend. Until a tan's not cool, no one cares about skin cancer. So looking at using influencers to help with that, but that takes time and that's a very difficult thing to achieve. Yeah, I think it's really hard with social media because very much the culture in Australia is being tan, is being healthy and it's trendy to wear it basically next to nothing to a festival or to a concert or to an event where you're out in the sun all day. You need to look this way, you need to feel this way, you need to do this in order to look like this. I think it's really trying to separate yourself from that and consume social media in a thoughtful way that isn't going to impact your decisions and in the long run harm you. I think the big problem with social media and science communication in general is that science communication always just has a lot more barriers. It is a lot harder to do, it requires a lot more effort, and it's a lot less attention grabbing. If you see something where sunscreen is super dangerous, you would want to share that really quickly. But if you see something where it's just like, this is how sunscreen works, it's a bit less exciting to share and that doesn't hook into these social media algorithms as much. There's a low cost UV camera idea that we're looking at that we're wanting to take into schools that is a way of helping each student personalise this message and go, oh, this is actually referring to you, me, and thinking about that. Today we're actually going to look at UV damage, so ultraviolet damage, which will actually give you an idea of what's going on under the skin. Usually I never apply sunscreen, like at all, unless it's like to the beach. And even at the beach, if I'm even there for a long duration, I'd only apply it once instead of multiple times. I feel like social media is the very kind of like toxic platform for that. Because, you know, if you see a lot of like girls in the summer, you know, you're tanning on the beach and it's like you see there's rows of like ten girls and they're all like lying on their back. There has to be a bit more kind of awareness of it around differently Instagram and TikTok. Um, it was quite scary seeing it, everyone seeing your face and your results. Last summer, like, I did also try and get a tan because, like, my friends were doing it. I'd always seen awareness about, like, getting a sunburn. I never really, like, heard much about a suntan. After using the machine, I probably wouldn't tan again for such long hours. I think it's really important sometimes to have that storytelling of, of people who have had a cancer experience, particularly younger in life, to really hit home with the younger generation as well. Thinking about that and how it will affect their appearance sometimes is enough to cut through. There's a lot of research showing that appearance-based messaging has been really effective for things like anti-smoking campaigns. So I think it can also be helpful for a sun protection campaign, as long as we do it with nuance. The one thing is something that we've been saying to secondary schools. What's the one thing you think you could do that would make a difference in your school? It's what are they motivated to do? Here's all the bits that we know are evidence-based, that we know work. You find the one that you think you're motivated to do, that you think is gonna be sustainable, and run with it. And that can build on itself.
Social marketing is an art and a science of trying to encourage people to do things that they don't think they really want to do and they want to deflect and say that's not me. So having that process of doing a good campaign is really important because we're not selling Coca-Cola. We have to sell something that people don't think they want. It's something that we can't just say it's hard, we have to try harder.